Willem, I saw thee last night atop the lighthouse, though was not thy shift to play wick. Old Abernath says that you switched him, even though you'd spent the whole day in doing maintenance labor. Wherefore hast thou done this? Has Abernath pulled you one over? I shall make sure he does his own work, if that is his due. No, sir. It's not so simple. I, I did take the shift from him, even though it meant more work. More than double my day's usual load, but... I... I had no choice. No choice? Explain thou this oddity thou sayest. Abernath hath not made thee, and yet... It was my will, but my will is not my own. I, uh, it is not the first time I've done so, sir. Of my last shifts, three were not meant to be mine, but I cannot resist, you see, I... Go on with it. I see something on the horizon approaching. Each night, like a mountain... Ever nearer, but no more clear, writhing, moving, I say, not only towards us in the shore, but churning in its own mass. It say no more. Poor Willem, so young, to have come so soon to a wick's worst end. Yes, I have heard of it before. The thing that you see approaching each night. Only you can see and only you will feel when at last it lands. Crushed will be your mind and soul. It is a terrible curse that lives upon the seas. Every lighthouse guardian's worst nightmare and soon your grave. It is a happy Chthonian. Hello, and welcome to Happy Chthonia. I have a microphone now. I'm Christoph, and uh, this is session two of the ongoing ultraviolet grasslands campaign. In this one, the party uh, decide what porcelain princes are, what vampires are. We do a lot of collaborative world building, which I believe is in the spirit of the ultraviolet grasslands. That's what Lucaretz had in mind. So, uh, it's, you know, it's our attempt at doing that kind of thing. And also, of course... 250-year-long uh, feud between nomads has settled. Someone loses their pants and gets a replacement. Yeah, it's a good episode. So uh, stick around. This will be a two-parter. This is part one uh, in which the party party in the uh, Porcelain Citadel. And then part two will be them uh, doing a good old-fashioned weeks-long journey across the terrible ultraviolet grasslands. Transition. Now, we've seen that the porcelain, on the point of lines and veils, and specifically slavery, we've seen that the porcelain princes have multiple bodies. Historically, the, his, the porcelain princes uh, used to, you know, maintain their multiple bodies uh, against the will of people whose bodies they took over. That being uncomfortably close to, or even worse than slavery, uh, now they uh, grow the bodies in vats. Of course. Our bodies never have consciousnesses or personalities before the princes kind of just download theirs into them. Those are the princes of where we are? Yeah. Yep. Like I found many crabs. <laughs> many crabs. I'm so funny. I got the vibe that, like, I mean, they're, they're playing off the insidious just really well. I really got the vibe that was like, you have to conglomerate in order to make a prince. That's cool as hell. <laughs> it looks like different individuals have to go. Bottoms out. It's like Voltron. Well, I mean, it had something to do with, like, Princess. each mask was, like, unique. It had something to do with each personality, too. So, like, uh, I don't know. We're going to go ahead and say that that's uh, how it works. Oh. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, that was just the vibe I got. I had no context for it. People, like, desperate people who are willing to... Uh, who want to gain power at the cost of <laughs> subsuming their exist, their personality to uh, the prince that they sort of summon out of their their mask wearing, maybe. Yes. They 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 uh, you know what I want to say. They purposefully choose to get the get out treatment. And has anyone seen Get Out? Uh, 
I'm imagining the business card scene from American Circuit <laughs> <laughs> as the personality of a porcelain prince. These five around the table all producing the same idea of what they're supposed to be unique personalities. <laughs> One's really sweating about it. We have to just, uh, I have randomly surgery written on here. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> because yeah. when you rolled your um, background, you are an aristocrat surgeon. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Which you can decide what that means. As a vampire, right? What does a surgeon do a vampire? That's my. That's my uh, are you a vampire? Yeah. You're employed by vampires just more than we are. Um. Lloyd and, um, Ian. Oh. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I said one of my turns is a vampire. A half vampire. Like that. But I, I'm not technically a vampire. <laughs> they have, you know how the, the American Constitution had a bunch of stuff about how many drops of blood you are to be like a citizen and that bullshit. Yeah. That's definitely <laughs> like how they measure vampire. true vampirehood in the, in the <laughs> Red Lands. You gotta do your like 23 and me, you're vampires. <laughs> and then uh, we'll see if you make some thresholds. <laughs> are these like like normal vampires? Like they can't be out during the day? And... Interesting question. And they like have to feed on blood or they're good on, on I mean, blood wine? Are, are you dead? The blood wine I is made from land that is meaty tissue. So it is sort yeah. of blood, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, this I mean this world not like a what is it, the violet hour or something? So like even the light source that we live off of isn't really the it comes same through as it a has smog. been. You know? It's not a star. Maybe that's why you're here. It's Go a dying with star. The definition. Go yeah. crazy. You're, you, I mean, you tell me what the vampires are like. <laughs> vampires are here now because of the uh, altered sun. They got sick of the dark. They found out oh, they were, yeah. uh, well, we can be out in the daylight here, so guys. Yeah. And they landed 20,000 years ago on yeah. this. If they're, you know, if they wear ruffs and silk and talk with British accents well, yeah, and bite people's necks. They definitely interview with a vampire. <laughs> good, good. Well, yeah. <laughs> That'll be the touchstone. But, just not sure the rules. <laughs> Classic vampire rules. Can they turn into rats? Maybe like the kind of light that you know burns them is an unusual kind, like uh, infrared light. Oh, there's no infrared in this world. It's just ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the the afternoon sunrise. It takes about every ten years. It must go underground. Okay. They're not so much shapeshifters as as much as like the exclusivity of being a vampire is like just. A part of any given, like your great grandmother's a bat, <laughs> she, but she's a vampire. <laughs> you know, like, but she does not not like she can transform. <laughs> she's stuck she's just very exclusive bar. about being a vampire. Holds it over other bats. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are they Victorian saying? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, I'm now. I'm thinking since they live in the Redlands, and yes, this is the ultraviolet grasslands past the Violet City. Maybe there's something about the, like the Superman red light of the sun style or something. Is like infrared light doesn't just like bake them and burn them up. It like hulks them out, out of control, and that's why they don't mess with the infrared lands, which would be mm. east Absolutely. of the circle. They live in the get your arms above your head. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna wait, wait, wait. I, I just lost the name. We live they we live over here mm -hmm. and it's the Bloodlands? Yeah. The Redlands. Yeah. Redlands. Yep. It's got meat for ground. Yep. At least in the orchards. And it's uh it's only got ultraviolet the whole world has ultraviolet light. Yeah. The whole world has a sun that casts mm -hmm. light and uh 
you know, the further this way you go, the more infrared and or the ultraviolet, oh, and the more ra irradiated you'll get. And the more okay. that way you go, theoretically, the more infrared the light is. Oh, so we, uh, my people live in the infrared. Just on the edge of it, because it empowers them, but if they go too far into it, they lose control, is my proposal. Oh, okay. I'm fine, but it's not my idea. I was going to say, they, they, as far as everyone knows, they can shape shift. But in reality, they're just excellent at calls. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Real fast changes. <laughs> Gosh, they've got rip-off dance games. And you know, yeah. They think that they can, you know, like, cast great illusions, but they're just really good at, like, dime store illusions, which is, uh, facilitates the quick costume these. change. Somebody's got, like, a pocket full of scarves <laughs> at all times. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, has everyone done the leveling up that they want to do? No. I did. I just I went to my boss. Very nice. And I've got gods love you more now. So I, I know. That's why. <laughs> I was I was trying to figure out if I had any spells to begin with. I don't think I do. Unless read minds. Read Probably minds. read minds is a spell. Um, yep. All right. Can I see the spell list? Then? Yep. This one's really themed to ultraviolet grasslands, uh, and then there's another one that's just a lot quicker with some play spells. And we are in the Citadel. Yep. For a couple of weeks. Yes. I'll tell you right now, I'm going to go party. Go on party. Hell yeah. Uh, Everybody, yeah. You've spent, we've yet to do like the first week turn there. Mercury has spent a week buying and selling. You got to spend a week if you're selling in bulk. So that's what you've been up to. Everyone else is thinking about taking a week to rest because they got uh, fucked up by some psychic flowers uh, and they want to recuperate. Oh, yeah, my you guys are hoping Could set right to partying with that first week, though. Yeah, I, I feel great. Awesome. So <laughs> you were, the whole time you were contemplating the orb that you got from. Yeah, I'm very chilled out right now. So it's time to. Uh, it's time to get out and cut a rug. Here's the city that you're in, surrounded by these heads that threaten to zap anything that's not supposed to be there and yeah, yeah. give you terrible warnings when you first come in. But mm -hmm. People also make little sheds by him. Well, so. Stay under their... Uh, <laughs> what is the... Uh, uh, a low altitude, which you can shoot. Get underneath the, uh, the zapper. Yeah, we figured you'd be at home with their guardian style, given that what is your lands? Started over like the burn or whatever. Yeah, um, I'm also made of brick. Yeah, <laughs> that's helpful. So you know, <laughs> blazed brick, good for. We're gonna say that helps when lasers are coming at you. Yeah, yeah, very reflective. <laughs> um, super the, nice. The, the you notice as you go through town, the creepy uh, multi-body porcelain masked rulers all kind of like see your glazed brick and you know shuffle nervously. It's a map of the place. Yeah. Steal it from the gym. Figure we the players need it more. Did you level up your con, did you say? Yeah. And how much partying do I have to do to gain experience? Great. How's, How's it cost me? Out? How partying works. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Might you'll spend points. a randomized amount of money. You have to dedicate a week to partying, and then a randomized amount of money is going to come out of your coffers, and you get XP equal to that amount. Spend it up. I got two grand, man. Yeah. All right. It's. Roll 1d6, and if it's a 6, you'll roll it again. 6 and roll over. Yep. Okay, so 6, <laughs> and then 7, 8, 9 times 200. So 200, 200? Uh, 9 times 200. 9 times 200 is what I have. You spend. I did spend it all. Do I get 1,800 experience points? I think so. Oh, Let yeah. me and just make well, sure. Right. Oh, that. What? You guys missed out on the best time. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. You are not even gonna believe it. Bingo. It was incredible. And then roll a D twenty to see what happens. Yeah. It's the bomb. And I gotta hear about what a rock party is. <laughs> right. So I'm assuming that y'all three are taking a week to rest while this okay. Yeah, I was in the opium den. Oh well. Good, good, good. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll get back to that after this one. Right. I'm about to go. It's just party. Yeah. Oh my god, it was such a rager. There were these nomads I am from way south. Boy, they were ready, boys. They were ready. It's the most decadent group of people that you've ever uh, hung out with. Oh, know? they weren't decadent, man. These guys were raw. They were nuts. <laughs> they were nuts. Uh, these were these kids. They could only drink seven up as children. <laughs> they were those kind of people, man. It was awesome. So that nineteen hundred for experience. Eighteen hundred. I had 100. 100 silver. Oh, yeah, you got 1900. And then if you look at the little chart. About to. I'm working, my, I'm at three now, working towards four. <laughs> Let's roll the d20 and then uh, and then we'll do the leveling up if you survive. Right. <laughs> because we're part of your party. Six. Great. You can always add to a reroll if you want to spend ba. Looks like you don't have any ba. Uh, all right. So you have this wild party over the span of weeks. I'm imagining, you know, like the sun goes across the sky, fast motion, and then it just <laughs> a little intercut with you with people in masks and just, you know, strobe lights, and you're drinking out of something that looks like a hookah shaped like an elephant. <laughs> eyes become dazed, and you wake up under a scorching sun, uh, blind drunk. All of your money is gone. You've been robbed, as well as... Uh, how many items do you have in your physical inventory? Oh, God. Hang on a second. How did this get decided? I have my seven strands of uh, unbreakable silver wire. I have my pyrite organ. Did you already give me one strand before you went out partying? Yeah. I, oh, okay, good. I, you were going to make one? Yeah, board. I made Oh, God, that's the best. So I have six. Sounds Thank like it's going to be the only thing in your life. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, a flail and a ball, or the ball from the crystal clock. Okay. Well, this many of those things are going to get stolen. Two of them. Right, very the stupid. ones that are stolen are number two, the pyrite organ. Dang, God. Oh. Yes. Well, good news, we don't have to go all the way. You have, you have, you have uh, vague memories of losing it to a uh, red lander with a red pompadour, gray skin, a white suit, and a party house. Um, and then the other thing... I should not have started the budget on the same side as my character. <laughs> okay, red lander stole my ball. <laughs> a red lander at the porcelain citadel. And then you also lose this. Uh, which is your clothes. Yep, you're naked. I was imagining that, yeah. You would just have now the monocle. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you. Again, by the way. You're... <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> you're in a ditch up here on the, uh, the, uns the unsettled waters. And in the ditch with you is another body. Oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I get two D10 rolls from some folks? Five. Five. This one is also stripped of flesh. Uh, it just has a metal skeleton. Oh, okay. Metal skeleton. Oh, okay. And then another D10 roll. Anybody right. else close this? Five. Oh, that's a twelve. So that's cool. Huh. Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven. All right. Uh, it has a clock in its chest. It's a metal skeleton. Uh, and it's a little flame. And it, uh, as you wake up, like, you know, just phase, <laughs> phase into <laughs> flavor. <laughs> yeah. you, as you're, like, coming to, you just, you know, the your audio sort of slowly fades in and you hear it saying, uh, Doja, 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 next to you. Okay. Um. So he's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You I, have a, you have I, a bunch of problems. I, you vaguely, you vaguely remember 
I I mean, a flash of a dark night and it with you in a closed space. I have a moment of panic. Where's Caster? <sighs> Caster, you look around, get up, look over the edge. He's in this unsettled waters. He's in it. Hunting. Oh, good. <laughs> so I see that. I then, while making a lot of like moaning and groaning noises, get my sorry ass to my feet. Do a lot of like, pause. Ah, I stand up. I don't know where you guys are. Some geese fly over you. <laughs> you see Caster is being approached. He's playing in the water, but then two porcelain crabs, their stalks come up in the water and they come at him and he runs towards you sideways. All right, boy, we gotta get out of here. We have to find everybody else. There's, uh, how well attached is the clock in this metal skeleton? Right, uh, it's like, it is part of it, but, uh, so it's, I'm imagining here's the clock and there are bolts, <coughs> so like a gear shaped bits coming out that bolted into the torso. Yeah. Awesome. What's he saying? Dojon. Dojon. No Dojon. I'm a polyglot. Uh, great. Where's the uh, languages? Oh, oh when I come so to the <laughs> You gather that it is its name that it's saying over and over. This is a uh, violent machine drone for a bone. Um, no, so he's bad news anyway. Yeah. They hypothetically have maybe a hive language used amongst themselves or a whole series of languages that have been blended together. Many scholars dispute that bones are even sentient. Uh, likely whatever language they might have utilizes electromagnetic ra radiation to convey meaning. Oh, cool. Um, well, this one's broken, and no, I can't no, get the no, clock out of his chest. No, 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 not right. without some tools or a pry bar or something. I'm stumbling off. <laughs> Joe Don, as you stumble off, you hear like a, and jump. And you look back and it's gone. So I made it. No. Great. Caster. Yeah. In meanwhile, in the opium den. <laughs> Do I get to level up? Because I'm at 1900 now. Yes, you get to level up. So you're one, two, three. If you look on the back, it says the kind of things you can get for leveling up. You have a choice of one of those, either plus one to hot or plus one to cot or plus one. Just to one. Hot. Yep. Even one for, well, for each of those gosh. three, you can you make. So I get choice. three more. Yep. Gotcha. That's where I was going with that. Yep. Okay. So you could get three spells plus the cow, or you want a mix. A mix of stuff. Uh, and all the spells and stuff. <laughs> You're right back with a bunch of oh. spells. I don't know what happened, but I have such a mess. Tony has. You want spells? And I'm sorry to make that uh, different uh, um, personality. What, what is that? I was going to write this for a second. I, I skipped it. I went with uh, soul and ha before with Ba do. Ba is when you roll a d20 roll like you just did for carousing. You get another reroll if you want. Reroll. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, higher is always better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Why is there money behind these spells? Um, they cost money. And all the spells on this sheet cost 100. Oh. So you, you can learn spells by spending the money and taking a week to try to learn it and roll it for it. Or you can just get one automatically when you level. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I just picked one. But as these are different, there's no description of that on here. That's right. Okay. I picked disguise, seeing as what I just said about my people. Ah, uh, yes. Um, well, you are in the opium den, you see like on the beds or in the corner of the room that you're coming in and out of with owner tending to you and just whistling merrily and really he's, he kind of becomes one of the attendants de facto just because he's, you know, immune to side effects. And he's having a gay old time, he's like got a French made uh, smock on the front of his face. <laughs> didn't, didn't, we say, didn't you say it took half the time or something with, a, with an attendant? To heal? It means you can heal two things. Oh, that's yeah. right. You can heal both your ca and was there another one that was Yeah, I was, I was down two. So that was... Wait, your ca was down two points or? No, no, no. Stats, good, good, good. I had 
down one card, down one bar. Both of those do that. And uh, over the week, you see there's somebody who doesn't stir. So, I mean, like, not a single muscle. Attendants just keep coming in and uh, re-upping this guy's IV of whatever it is. It's like a glowing thing. Also, there are, there are uh, purple lights in here, and when you blow out the smoke, uh, glows in the uh, purple light, green. And you see at one point, someone opens up a room, and they're, you know, it isn't made from uh, poppy seeds. They're taking what, what appear to be cherry blossoms and treating them to produce the uh, uh, what's on tap here. There is there is a carving of a metal zeppelin that hangs <laughs> over the center of the room. And they close under the It turns like a disc of all and it has the four horsemen of the apocalypse like standing in the bottom of it. So I'm gonna take cerebral forge. Awesome. Just so that's one, right? Yeah. Um, because apparently you're all in a drug up. And this one Purifies the target's brains of any impurities, oh, drugs, or mind alterations. <laughs> Takes one injury. Their recent memories become fuzzy. Boy, I should have done this. It's a good one to have on hand. I would also say if someone has something taking up a meta metaphysical inventory slot, so we don't hurt you probably. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to go one and one. Ah, uh, fuck. We're really living big here. We've come a long way since teenagers in the basement. I guess we're pretty cheap of us. You don't want to get it all over your dice, you know? Oh, that's really smart. Have these fancy stone dice. We can cheat enough for us. I saw an ad for Perfect. that on something similar on, on Facebook for like 20 bucks. And then I just went on eBay and found these for like two. Yeah. Smart. Some guy from the Britain News for you. Oh, really good. This fellow in the bed who hasn't stirred is surrounded by bead curtains. A lot of them have fallen down. They just look like frozen snakes and spasm on the ground to your, uh, your phasing eyes. Uh, uh, you know, he has an attendant or a guard in front of him, which is headless. Its head's been replaced with a uh, bell glass or a bell jar full of water with Rana in it, a metal rectangle on his chest. Sure, he's only wearing a leather, uh, a leather tunic, or no, a leather kilt, and he has a sawed-off shotgun. And he just sits in front of him, and he only lets attendants. Sometimes, like random people, you know, wander by in a daze, and he stands up and sort of pushes them away. Uh, but the fellow he's guarding has brown and white skin that looks like cowhide, messy gray dreads. He's wearing like tied together black and white tie dye rags. And at the end of <laughs> your time. Kind of humanoid? Yep. Humanoid. It appears to be a standard post human. Uh, near the end of your time there, uh, someone comes to pick him up who uh, looks like a young relative. And uh, the guard sort of stands up to push him away and he uh, picks up uh, like a magnetic credit card looking thing and puts it on the guard's chest and the guard steps away and goes and then he snaps and someone helps and brings in a wheelbarrow and puts his got old guy in a wheelbarrow and starts to cart him off but uh, there's also like piano on the side of the room with most of the keys broken and there's a weird circle like worn into the floor where the piano's been carted around and as he crosses the line you realize that the fallen bead curtain and the random circle must have accidentally made some kind of a magic circle around the bed because as soon as he crosses it, he wakes up and gasps. <gasps> and he just looks around wildly and locks eyes with you and says, I've seen it. I've seen my own death flight from here to the black neck ocean. Oh, the city. It is perfect. So terrible. Anything you could want a city to be, he looks at, he looks at the young man and puts his hand on his shoulder. The guy just like rolls his eyes as he hears, <laughs> as he hears this. It's utterly perfect. Hollow, meaningless. From above us up, below a great tendril burrowing itself out. Toward us, to the west, in the chasms. Canyons, dark ravines of the great. River full of smog and glowing in the shadow. We, we can stop it. 
And he just starts wheeling them off and whacks his hands away, brings them towards us. We can beg to the piranha roots to cut the line, offer a sacrifice of appeasement to the grand observer, a druid of the forest of meat. Could, could save us. We could blow up the canyon, stop the tendril thing. And they just brings him out. Pray for reinforcements from the white city. Who coaxed the tendril back using the language of the black? So that happens. Far out. <laughs> <laughs> and then Boner sort of like pats you on the shoulder and says, It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Alright, well, my. My bond and pa are all here. Yes, the gods are very happy with what you've done. And <laughs> your mind is, you know, a very strict, what is it the dude says in the Big Lebowski? You know, I'm, I'm sticking to a very strict uh, drug regimen to keep my mind limber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It definitely feels like it applies to the science that exists in this world. <laughs> you know what else is funny is that the background music was actually perfect. Right. Or, uh, <laughs> like the tempo and at the same time. Like, it was guys really out. Out the <laughs> and then out the door. The tone? It was totally, uh, you know, rising time action and drug dead kind of <laughs> Oh my gosh, la- one of the penultimate scenes in uh, Boogie Nights. With yeah. Alfred Molina and yeah. the Firecrackers. Oh, yeah. You rest in. Uh, Oh, wait, I got a question for you. Yep. Did any of this guy's ranting sound familiar to the other one we saw by the crater? You mean Prophet? Yeah, the prophet. prophet. They both spoke of the Black City. The piranhas, I think, right? You guys spoke of piranhas, too? Yeah, something about severing roots or something? I don't know if the other... This one definitely, definitely talked about the briars. Yeah. I thought it was the just... The werewolves. Uh, Clement Spire. Yeah, yeah, I just thought yeah. it was that. Yeah. Piranhas on your connection. They both spoke of the Grand Observer. This fellow in the wheelbarrow said if you, you know, appeal to the Grand Observer, maybe that'd help with the tendril vision that he had. The blue Mohawk guy had a bunch of uh, uh, tablet scrolls of prophet prophecies from the Grand Observer. Apparently he's a figure in the Black City. That's right. You stayed in a decadent shell of civilization, spending a hundred dollars for your week to try and earn some respect. Yes. Did you get it? I don't know. I was, I was wiling out on the temporal distortion that I was suffering from. Roll a d8. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Since my butler was busy installing a grandmother into a little neck suit, all I had was a little splish splash to go. Yeah, whenever you would wake up, you'd see him standing right in front of the door and at, at attention. <laughs> Two. <laughs> splish splash is great. One day when you come out near the end of your stay, you come out from the place you're staying, which is up on the edge of uh, Hand Hill there, uh, kind of lower down. The broken line is where the poorer folks stay. Lowest line is where a lot of traders slum about. But in the houses of many colors, uh, you're able to find a place in the poor sun prince's day to come down there time by time. Uh, a a ten-bodied porcelain prince uh, is milling out the uh, milling on the veranda outside of the colored home where you are. This teal, teal colored one, and they turn to you and you listen. Say, you come from the viaducts of the high road and the low. Yeah. <laughs> They all stand as one from like leaning and panting and sitting and looking up. Stand in sort of semicircle. Tries to match the 
tries to follow the motions. <laughs> we are the father of the Mollusk Appreciation Nomination. Okay. What did you think of the Coral Viaduct? Oh, sorry. Coral Viaduct would be like a big road. There's okay, a road so made out of Coral. I do was... There was a sat trap there who was being very exclusive about the light show, so I was a little distracted by that. But otherwise, it seemed great. The sat traps can be very, very exclusive indeed. Yeah. In this region, we keep them confined to the trading houses. You know, they've lately become quite interested in a prophecy. They think that. The first has returned. <laughs> and they all start laughing. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> they all stop. Who exactly is that? And then, like, try and, like, play it off like I'm laughing with them, but, like, I'm genuinely. <laughs> oh, it's an ancient. They all do this hand motion at the same time. Some <laughs> ancient, idiotic dogma that the stage traps cling to for meaning in the post human lands. An idea that there was a first in a suit so pure it couldn't be seen, and a last in a suit of black. Satraps who went to the beyond and promised one day to come back. Classic messianic drivel. Not anything like the denomination of the coral. Which, I mean, of course, because the coral is all about beauty. The beauty of living coral taken out from the ocean and taught to live on land. If there was one thing that the ancient host humans got correct, it was this. And they all take, they all reveal that they're wearing talismans of like weirdly shaped little coral branches. Oh. Right, this is very different. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can see these ones. Yeah. But you hide them. I put them away. Hey, I'm good. People can get really jealous of the best things. Exactly, they say. <laughs> As one who has walked under the coral road in the snow. Okay. Okay, yeah. We make our pilgrimage there from the beginning to the end twice a year. I'm trying to remember if I if we saw any out there. I saw one of the first places you went to Prince's Coral Road. Yes. this. Yeah. Use it around as they're on about. Right. I'm trying to remember if we saw any princes out there. I don't think we did. Uh, nope. But it's not, like, I didn't see any, uh, any of your kin out there, so the pilgrimage isn't a till. Yes, only Celadon Tenbody makes his pilgrimage there. On the Red Month and the Old Second. When this month comes, if you would join the denomination and gain the power and prestige that comes with it, one reaches into his robes and takes out a Celadon mask that looks just like theirs, and a, a necklace that has a coral shaped like a little six-fingered paw, and they hand it to you. You got a hook, line, and singer with that one. <laughs> His butler is away. His eyes are so big. Cult activity? Community? <laughs> I've always wanted to belong to something. <laughs> Remember, red month and old second, under the crumbling roads of Cornwall. They say as they walk away. <laughs> so I will never forget. It's <laughs> just to their backs. <laughs> <laughs> under class experience, professional citizen. Also, high expectations. You, you see, know, it? that's coming into play here. And there. At the back of the party, there's one who walks slower than all the others at the length, and it's kind of stupid with age. Yes. 
<laughs> Celadon ten body. Oh. And that was so many relations I was learning about right there. <laughs> Uh, okay, just to clarify, yep. the satraps believe in one that uh, one suit There's is so pure. Sounds like a proto suit. Yeah, the, so there was one that could not be seen, and there was one that was all like obsidian, sort of. Okay. Right. What was the name of that too? The first and the last. The first. The, is that what the what they referred to it as? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody else worships coral. These guys worship. Was there a specific? What was it? Coral. Just the way of the coral, or there. He Celadon is the father of the mollusk appreciation denomination. Mollusk appreciation. They go uh, as they're walking back. You look after them, and you see coming out of their long, they have like long uh, teal-colored robes, and coming out from under them are little living coral critters, like mice that skitter amongst their. Which is, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of wild magic going on in this world, but usually coral isn't sentient. So yeah. It's a special magic that they have. <laughs> I'm talking about the sea, which I'm like, that's close enough to the swamps I come from. <laughs> Certainly beats the. They're both very damp. Yeah. We had to walk through crunchy, what was it? It was Porcel porcelain fields, yeah, which was way grosser. It was like the worst to me. I thought did not have a good time in the crunchy lands of the porcelain. Well, I thought everything on here was porcelain. Nothing in the world was porcelain? You're in kind of a porcelain strip. Oh, God. Yeah. There's some variety beyond it. And back back by where you come from, the sea isn't so porcelain ish. The sea? Yeah, it's, it's under the sea. Like underneath your purple sheet is the, the surface sure. sea. No, I thought like the land, like whatever. Like, I had the impression that all the soil was was. I thought your cradle was, was the all. Time of Celadon Celadon again? Or, 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 last time. Celadon Tenbody is father of the mollusk appreciation yeah, yeah, down there. Very like all grasslands. <laughs> okay. Or which like, is right gray, and then it turns to desert. Mm -hmm. Gray, and this is like verdant. Was that from the Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. You have earned the respect of at least one porcelain prince. You realize that the place you've been staying is uh, uh, all the windows are latticed with coral. Oh, nice. It's so much easier to understand when it's not distorted by time. <laughs> I thought those were just the shadows of the future and past flickering in and out. Oh, I find them talking to one unison organism perfect way better. I can totally grasp this. Might be home. Loyalty, you. Last we left you, uh, you were at a body lab where. Uh, We're going to see how things went with Grandma in the suit. Yep. Yeah. You also. are. You, do you look, are, look different? Have you decked yourself out with new gear? Just trying well, to get a visual. Um, okay. Your camo is an iron jaw, right? Okay. <laughs> The camel's, camel's been traded to nomads for a black of brick. Um, loyalty's leg is porcelain due to divine intervention when it got infected by a porcelain shard. Instead of killing him, it turned his leg porcelain. Mm -hmm. So he is a uh, white brick. Sure and, uh, he's going with the theme. Now that he's in the porcelain cinema, I'm like, that's nice. When in Rome. So he, um, he's sporting a. Uh, you're now armed with a porcelain pistol and a porcelain mace on either hip. And uh, he is, at least in this city, like affecting a serene confidence. Mm -hmm. Trying to look a little bit calmer than his um, usual duty inquisitive for himself. Awesome. Roll a yes no on whether this week is enough to get grandma into the suit or it'll take another. Yes. All right. Diligence, right? Yeah, diligence, Mary. 
You nod off, doesn't take so long in the night, some over 12 hours for them to do this. Whatever it is they're doing beyond those sterile doors. But uh, you come to with the <laughs> sound of an operational mech. Uh, and see yeah. Is that your new hip, Grandma? <laughs> from, <laughs> from a shadow to Alcom, uh, she steps behind her is Magic Butler. Uh, face occluded by, you know, sh shade, shady hood. Uh, she says, It is me. I live. <laughs> she shoots from the ceiling. <laughs> like, you leave her arm? Did you do yeah. Did you do the motive? Well, that's what I mean. Like, leave her arm. But, like, like, what was the size? It was like a this big or something? Like, yeah. for context, <laughs> like, the thing is. <laughs> Derringer Gatling guns. You hear it. You hear it. Derringer Gatling guns. And then you see a uh, champagne cork fly out from the shadows, and uh, Many Cracks Five Body comes out as well. Uh, and they pass around a champagne bottle to celebrate this. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, to the hexads, to actuarial science, and to all the science that Grandma's going to be able to do with her new actuarial weaponry. <laughs> here, here! <laughs> awesome. Um, and, and thus becomes loyalty in his grandmother getting the town? Awesome. Yep. And many crabs. Many crabs can come along too. <laughs> he wants to party. Definitely. Many crabs uh, uh, is hanging out with Magic Butler uh, a lot of the time, and they have a lot to say to each other. Uh, diligence just can't get enough of having a body and <laughs> shooting. <laughs> there, you know, whenever there are creatures that she can kill with uh, impunity, like vermin, she definitely oh. takes uh, takes advantage of that opportunity. <laughs> she says, uh, "I have <laughs> I have accounting to make up for." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's how it works for skilled actuary. You, know? <laughs> you have to end the lives of some vermin now and then if you ever want. To. Or the lives. Yeah. We're gonna balance it all out. <laughs> we'll need her <laughs> later. <laughs> Never had too many. In the during the partying week, she's definitely getting like a, a little typewriter type thing installed that can print out uh, <laughs> spreadsheets Taking and accounts, <laughs> like that paper that Z's together. <laughs> so I think that diligence. Um, I am down for diligence to become a Terrabin follower if it makes sense. And also, I suspect she wants to get back to Hexen business in the city. Um, so, loyalty is probably going to propose that they party in Porcelain Town, and then she'd come along as far east as the tower that they're going to on the way back to the Violet City. Excellent. Well, unless, and like, you would not presume to propose that Grandma continue journeying with them. She is far more important than the hex hat ranks. Um, but if that is her desire, then loyalty would be down. She says, I have business in the blue runes. That's the proper life, right? Yep. 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 Yeah, she's got some time to settle back home. <laughs> <laughs> And then, as she does that, she turns meaningfully. I'm. I. What does she have a face? If so, what does it look like? It used to be these were just faceless things animated by wind spirits. Well, What's I mean, clearly on? the ruby has now been installed into yeah. the bot with her face kind of disembodied face floating in it. Excellent. But it's like somewhere down below shoulder level. It's like guns <laughs> and then like the disembodied face and a little ruby. Great. It turned, you know, it has a swiveling 360 hips, and it, as she says, she has business to settle in the runelands. She looks back meaningfully at uh, uh, Many Cracks Five Body, who nods. And then, if you want to spend some weeks, uh, spend some cash to get some XP, it's the D right. exploding D6. Let's see how this party goes. Also, wow, D6. everybody's. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go spend more money than you thought. Yeah. This is the 
place to well, party, I guess. Well, we got $1,500, so... Yes. What? Oh, no! So keep going? Yep. Well, that's true. Well, 13, 14, 14 times 200 is 2,800, but Wyoming only has 1,500. Right. 14. We have a new 1400 in debt. So we're going into debt. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Where, so so how did you get 1400 in I rolled 6, 6, and 2. That's right. That's times 200. Got. That's all I got. Okay. I thought 6. I now understand. When you said 6 rolls again, I did not realize I was taking a 6. Uh, yes, uh, yes. That it was rolls again point. and add. That gotcha. Should say. All right. Right, who is loyalty in debt to? Blaze Veneer, 12 body. Oh, that's the same um, satrap. This is a new. This is a different person. This is a new porcelain this prince. This is a porcelain prince. Yep, Blaze Veneer, 12 body, 1400. And, uh, well, I, I have more to say about that, but let's find out <laughs> what the partying was like first with the d20 roll. Uh. Oh, that was his last couple bucks, deeply in debt to this person, Prince, who kept the party rolling. Mm -hmm. Roll a one on the d20. Do you have any? Ah, if you have, you can or cannot. <laughs> I got I say, like this character enough, I'll spend a bot and re-roll that. Yeah. I feel like a one has got to be some sort of just gruesome death. I'm holding up for it. <laughs> it's like, At do you? An ignoble death. Do you want to roll that? There you go. There we go. All right. Uh, what did the partying sort of start out looking like? Well, it started out with taking Grandma to the shooting range where they throw clay pitches. Literally. Yeah, of course. Oh, <laughs> and um, at, at the shooting range, they met Blaze Veneer, 12 body, um, who is fond of shooting a whole flock of clay pigeons in one one go um, and uh, started handing uh, loyalty and diligence um, extra shells for the clay pigeon shooting and uh, next thing they knew they were um, in a glittering rooftop bar with blaze and several other porcelain princes who seemed to enjoy the game of mingling their various parts at many different tables until outsiders really couldn't keep track of which princes were who. The, the princes are all playing the game of trying to get each other's many parts drunk enough that they lose track <laughs> of who is who. And Quite a they, they like to like let slip very juicy bits of gossip that they know are cool to tell to some of their friends, but not others. And so the game is everyone gets each other drunk enough and commingles each other's many person bodies until someone hears a very juicy bit of that they weren't supposed to. <laughs> At which point they try to figure out who even is which person's <laughs> and uh, corner all of their bodies to confront them about it. It's a level of. Um, it's a level of high society gamesmanship that loyalty cannot follow after the first drink. We'll say that this is hilarious. We'll say that there is where a waiter approaches you uh, and and entices your increasingly inebriated self to join a revolutionary movement. They seem they seem off put by right, the princes, and they kind of cast eyes at them as they as they re, re clump into bodies to begin the harangue. They bring you back through the servants' quarters, um, uh, and you kind of again, you you're sitting at a table under you know a naked light where people have this map in front of them and they're discussing this and that. And again, I mean, you sort of get overwhelmed, and the next thing you know, someone else is a, a pretty person is pulling you away from this gathering, uh, and you're in a dance party, and uh, you won a pie, but you're very exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Well, loyalty is uh, far more comfortable with raid partying and with raid planning and dance partying. 
I thought, that's what he did in his actuarial job with the mob. <laughs> a lot of planning raids and dance parties. <laughs> Much more so than the, the high society. But, um... You learn that the, um... Your life burns faster in this house is where the... Is sort of like the head, the HQ of these revolutionaries. You can decide what kind of, well, what kind of pie is it? Me? Yeah. Okay. And then the inventory My question is, is down, kind of given that you're so, so far in debt, you spend a little money making sure the competition got bribed out enough where you auto won, like nothing was left to chance? <laughs> yeah, I think loyalty was like buying everyone drinks and throwing knives around because he got so excited to win this pie. And like it became its own adventure. That's um, and there were kind of a pie couple this? of porcelain princes playing against him yes. with their great wealth in many parts. And he just kept getting drunker and taking more more money on credit for Blaze Veneer 12 body. <laughs> Who was glad to... All 12 of whose parts were thinking it was great to bankroll loyalty on this <laughs> fool's errand. <laughs> and so the pie may not have been that good, but to begin with, it may not have been that good of a prize, but eventually the competition, you know... <laughs> what could be like a shameful... It valued it. Like a shameful delicacy. You know, like something that where like the porcelain princes do love eating it, but if they do, oh, it man. automatically stains their like mask, where it's like they oh. are known to have partaken. Indulged. Yeah. Oh, Blackberry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have such a specific vibe going on. I just <laughs> what if it's um, like a mythical color? Very. You know, is mm -hmm. it the, the like? Um, if you could name it Inner after Inner fuchsia it. berry pie, <laughs> or the um, subversively blue berry pie. I don't know, like there's like something in that. What's the name of a famous subversive? In in the porcelain uh, citadel, you all are realizing as you spend time there, their big export are uh, Chernoff cherries and uh, Valdelov violets. Um, so, in theme with that, if you could think of the name of a famous revolutionary, Russian or otherwise, name a berry after that, that would probably be there. Violet berry. This is, so, so this is clearly Chekhov's cherry pie. <laughs> Chekhov's cherry. <laughs> Where once the pie has been introduced to the storyline, someone is going to get hit with it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's describe in utter detail what this is going to look like later on. <laughs> but given, given the nature of this being a piece of plot, it is fate that someone at the right moment will be hit with this plot. Oh, God. Good. Why don't we have check out cherry pie? Yeah. Uh, roll a yes no for whether that exhaustion is going to cost you. Just the exhaustion of the whole adventure. No. Okay. So you're exhausted, but it's not, you know, mechanical. Right. And then... Um, heaps of XPs. Yes. With this heaps of debt. We're going more to level four. Nice. And you're 1400 in the hole. $1,400 in the hole. That's what? I thought I was doing terrible being broke. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze yeah, Veneer. Right. You I owe that. I was fine rolling a D6 with $1,500. <laughs> <laughs> You got that 1400 debt to Blaze Veneer 12 body. Uh, they approach you, you know, the next day while you're hungover, uh, and they tell you that you have to either return that 1400 uh, within six months, uh, or your life is forfeit, or uh, and roll this D30 for where uh, on the map this is. There is something she needs, a fetch list. 15. Seventeen. Nice. Nice chill music. Come down. <laughs> right. Nice. 
Orange Month. Orange Month. Orange Month. Orange Month. Pair back by the third month of Dead Winter. You can note that there. You can also note it on the calendar on the back here. Go to the uh, trade uh, trade one of the shamans at the Eternal Snaking Marker mm -hmm. for a spirit voyage chart and return it to them. You, uh, in the party, you gathered that Blaze Veneer is a specialist in polybody magics. They do polybody upkeep for most of the other princes. Let's see what has something to do with that. What's the name of this system? Uh, I call it Ha Kaba. The setting is ultraviolet grasslands. Is it? Did you? Are you making all this up, or is this a published? Like that bit I just said about the Serpent Stone and the, the Voyage? Yeah. That's in here, the setting book. And that's UEG? Yep, Ultraviolet Grasslands. Okay. And the mechanics are a hack of Adventure Hour. My friend was asking me exactly what we were doing, and I couldn't tell them. <laughs> I didn't really know how to describe it. Yeah. Ooh, what is yeah. this game? Mm. Gaspian is yeah. away. Is this second edition? Yes, yeah, we're doing the second edition of UVG. Now, in the book of UVG, it has a, its own mechanics, which are like kind of like a hack of 5th edition D&D, but we're not using those. Mm. Well, we're using the setting, but not the mechanics. So wait, did we start covering a second week? Yep, we're okay. in week two. Could I repair or get someone to repair my shield? You're not going to party? I <laughs> would love to party, but also we're about to do a job where combat's likely, and I'd like that shield to help me out last time. And in the weeks that we're doing here, mm -hmm. as long as you're spending three or one hundred dollars a week, you don't have to buy supplies. Oh. So we're going into week two. How many weeks? Okay. Make sure you've spent three dollars for your time in the opium den. Um, three dollars for staying, you know, travelers camps. Hundred dollars. Oh yeah, second months. week I'll build. Keep at that. Oh, oh okay. Well, you could definitely get your field repaired. I wrote down also here that I, that I oh, sweet. Okay. just drop it off at an armor. <laughs> I guess I already paid for the hotel. At least that's my note. Okay. So, we'll say so you've done the first week already. Okay. So, the, the, but the. I don't remember. I took $3 for the opium den, or I put two weeks on the hotel. I don't know. Ooh. I think you would only you would only have done one week because we weren't talking about the second week yet. Okay. So we'll say you've already paid the three. Three hundred. Three dollars. No, no, no. I was going to go on the upper crust. Oh, we haven't done that yet. But you've already paid that hundred last time. That does ring a bell. Okay. So one one hundred, I think. Yep. Got it. For Ooh. the second week. Okay. You're chilling with you. Crest. Got a note in here about how much it costs. Them. Reasons? Hmm? What's good? Oh, the tangerine I just have yeah. 
Raisins are dangerous too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can put the reason I brought this bag. Raisins? Raisins. Chocolate covered caramels. Oh. I could eat that literal bag. No. <laughs> like tonight. It would not be a problem. Oh my gosh. If I had a nice oh, thick yeah. black coffee, I totally would. Oh yeah, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just cost a buck to repair the shield. Fuck it. Not bad. It's a buck? Yeah. Well, shield costs five bucks dollars, one dollar to repair all the same. Oh, okay. If you're out in the wild, it would cost more. Oh, cool. Another 100 to stay in the nice area? Mm -hmm. Buck do that? I want to learn. I would like to research about these princes and have a reason to become literate in my own language, <laughs> given that I've got a ca now. <laughs> I figure the butler's free for the second week. Makes me think of training and improvement school by studying from four different sources one week each. So mm -hmm. this source would be the porcelain citadel. You just maybe write four check boxes by whatever it is you want to learn your language, or if you're spending the week to study the porcelain princes. Oh yeah, the system. porcelain princes. Go ahead and. Go ahead and do do one out of four checks for learning your language. Say you're doing that at night while studying with other pencils. Oh, okay. Just trying to rub shoulders. Do you not shoulders. talk? Right. What's that? What? Do you not talk? No, no, I talk. I just I had no ka, and that was like a basis for how many languages you could know. So oh. I figured like with zero ka, I'm not literate in the one language I know how to speak. So gotcha. I'm just I understand. assuming barbarian rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes, you would. You're a barbarian. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think of myself as a barbarian, but if you look at him, he just... <laughs> Everyone else does, so yeah. you might as well accept it. <laughs> uh, roll 2d10s uh, separately. Give me the results separately, oh, okay, please. Gotcha. Yeah. I was like, because I rolled in 1, 2, 4, and I was like, oh, 3, yeah. 2. Come on, we've got to stop doing these 2s. Come on, something So else. you're... you're... Nine. Okay, cool, sorry. The biggest uh, source of info that you're uh, able to learn from is one of Celadon Ten's uh, polybodies. Sort of once after you've been poking around for a little bit and trying to learn about the uh, princes, she uh, body nine sort of goes along with you. Wait, she's a seduction unit with triple triple jointed. Digits and extremities and limbs. That's amazing. Yeah. I've got extremity. <laughs> Shove my my extra fingers, vestigial fingers. And your head like goes snaking down. It's like fantastic. Oh, yours are beautiful too. <laughs> <laughs> Mine don't move. They're just vestigial. Just <laughs> <laughs> waggle the around. Not the best dexterity though. Uh, no, I'm working on that. It's like if you're trying to contract a muscle you never done before on purpose? I, I think I've seen them twitch when I woke up or something. <laughs> Tentacles come out from under her mask and like, mm -hmm. move them around. Yeah, really <laughs> they make them, like little dolls talking to each other. This is the most personal thing <laughs> I've had all day. I've had a whole week. <laughs> it's great. You, you learn with her as you're going around and asking about the princes. Um, in various different displays of Princes uh, walking down and getting upset and kicking people off of like the, the tiers. It's it's yeah. like the ground is vaguely tiered, to, uh, like a, but they count each single tier of ground as being associated with class. So when they see something, they'll just push somebody down and be like you're two inches too high. And <laughs> where the princess any. Any challenge to the status quo is a problem to be crushed. And that is for all of them. That's just sort of okay. a commonality for their personalities. Uh... And they, you hear a lot of hubbub about this business at the, uh, the last trading house with uh, Sarai, the, the satraps, the two Sarais, that's it. Mm -hmm. The satraps kind of live in one and the princes live in another and they, they're they huge, giant, gross, tall-legged burden beasts. Uh, you've seen the satrap ones that are like big crystals and the 
porcelain ones are of course white porcelain with spindly <laughs> legs. They carry shit that they have trading parties going out all the time, and this is one of the places where those two groups trade with each other. Okay. The princes are upset at this growing rumor of a messiah of the first and last or whatever, because it's not the status quo. Now there are gonna be fewer satrap uh, wagons available to trade with. Messiah. Kind of an important note, I feel like. <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> Considering what, this is coming from the culture that is funding our whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and then uh, status quo of. Meant to be a better Great. It's great stuff. <laughs> oh, Put them over on the table. <laughs> Same way. Wait. Thank you. Yep. Whoa. Nice. As long as you're maintained. Out here, she takes you to the houses to, to examine them, and uh, while she goes to spend some time with a say trap that she knows, mm -hmm. say trap 312 body. Gray sand. You see a uh, wow. Is that oh, lighting? Yeah. There it is. So I saw the big flash, but I was still surprised by it. Yeah. Powerful. Dumb my gun. Here is a fellow you can see walking towards the or away from the say trap trading house and a ways behind him there is a long line of walking trees just oh, cool. hundreds of meters like, long yeah. they don't have faces or anything like that but their roots do allow them to ambulate um there's this slow squat faced black haired pale orange person big woolly white beard and just tree themed later hosen <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, and he's riding around on a small hover wagon. He's like sort of nodding off. Uh, uh, and is sort of just cursing to himself as he goes. And she's walking off of him? She's walked off with one of the satraps or oh. the space helmets. But as she goes, this guy kind of comes onto the scene and says, Satraps. <laughs> Spits on the ground. <sighs> Not, uh, not well liked amongst the tree people. Walk and talk. I don't want the trees to catch up to me. He's uh, hovering. Oh, <laughs> you're not with them. I'm sorry, the whole leader. <laughs> I am with them. I'm oh. a shepherd. <laughs> it's a curse. I'm contagious. <laughs> they awaken wherever I walk and follow me to the ends of the earth. This is contagious, right? Every cough. Yeah. Say one of those, dude. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no, a curse? Because they follow you around? Right. Not a big deal. Lumber's good trade. The say traps will trade for anything these days. The prince is coral. No lumber. He should gestures at the giant uh, prince house on the hill. Yeah, it's too colorful, I think, for their taste. Mm -hmm. Say traps usually like stuff to burn. Mm, they laser rays, superannuated light, or whatever they call it. He goes over the hump in his hovercraft. <laughs> and I bring good news. Come from, come from the behemoth shell. Never seen a marmot folk caravan once in all my life treatment. <laughs> Back and forth from here to there. Sudden they got one. Or no, uh, the great folk. That's who he says, the great folk at the Pima Shell. Made a caravan to go out to the ribs of the father and to get. He leans in real close and sneezes on him. Oh, yeah. That was the thing. Thak is not, had not a problem. Like, he's been up and close just <laughs> great. the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. So it's moving even closer space. <laughs> it's like a rubbing. You could feel his beard on the earth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what? to find a marmot bone mess to bring back to the shell. 
They brought him a mollusk shell the size of a house to tempt him back. He grabs your lapels. The marmots! The arch enemies of the sea traps. And they don't give a damn. He's gone mad. He throws you back. <laughs> the arch enemies of the sea traps are marmots? <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> I'm processing all this. Okay, sorry, great folk. Oh god, and hold on, time out. He says, "These weird alien spacemen are Marvin. Oh, Marvin folk. Marvin folk. Yeah, right." Which are not the great folk. The great folk are trying to, uh, trying to recruit the marmot folk. I'm trying to get, or uh, what was it, uh, behemoth shell? Yep. They're trying to get a marmot bone. What was it, mastodon? They're bringing a shell down to the ribs of the father to tempt a bone master to come back to him. That's right. Now the great folk are fine bone masters, bone workers in their own sense. They can turn it into any form, bring it to life, uh, sing it into sheets you can only imagine, but they're nothing better than modern folks. They learn bone mancy from the youngest age. Roll a d10. <laughs> Sweet. Bone <laughs> man. Ten. Awesome. <laughs> They wear bone dresses and sit on bone chairs. They use bone pens, smoke bone pipes. They surround themselves with memento mori. I have one. Who goes in and what, Joe, what uh, <laughs> bone thing do they take as a souvenir? Oh, like what part? part? Yeah, well, what is what is the bone turned into? Like a bone so oh, was made into something. I was made into, uh, it's here, it's a case. Uh, it it's a sternum. That's made into uh, almost flat like cigarette case. Do you hear that hinge? No, you don't, because it's perfect. <laughs> Takes one out and begins to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! He points down, and there's a, there's a little uh, a tiny tuffet of grass that's beginning to raise itself up and walk towards him. <laughs> Speeds up his hover cart, doesn't leave so, you in the dust. Why, why is it such a bother, though? <laughs> he looks back at it, and he says, I was cursed by a witch from the three sticks with this terrible curse. Mad at me, because I stole a man. He was trampled to death by them trees. I've seen so many die. <laughs> the witch of the... What? <laughs> Sorry. Say the... Three witch? What? Three sticks. The three witch of the three Man, I want that curse. What can I do to piss her off? <laughs> um. The witch of the three. Can't steal her man. Apparently he's dead now. <laughs> Trampled by trees. <laughs> that were brought. I, which presumably could only trample him once the curse. Once he'd already been stolen by the very curse. That, it, does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Which of the. I love it. I love everything about. God, I just I assume everyone's lying, but also it, they've got to be telling the truth. <laughs> all these little rants got to fit together. None of these could be true. <laughs> Maybe they're all true. Who knows? Something about the spire and the big prophecy that's coming down. First, in quotation marks. Yeah, roll a. Uh, uh, Yes, no, a d6. Failure, uh, you have the tree curse. Success, you, you didn't catch it. Shit. Come on, you failure. Never... Do! All right. <laughs> You've got the tree curse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the best one yet. <laughs> Tree curves to put it under metaphysical, yes? Mm -hmm. okay. I like being from a swamp, your immune system is better <laughs> My immune system's great. It only pushes out things I don't want. 
<laughs> I'm just very welcoming to the colonies that I enjoy. Right. That's why I was like, why is it such a bother? <laughs> That's why I was a fish there. God. Washing back to the exit of the Simpsons when he's in the arms, but it's time to explain to him that he has every disease, but it's like, <laughs> yeah. he can't get through. Yes. So you're saying I'm indestructible. No, 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 it's like, no, it's indestructible. <laughs> How about Elroy for week two? You already partied for one week. Have I met up with everyone else? Yeah. Are we back together? Yeah, you know, you're in the so. same, you're in the same compound. We're in the same compound. Yeah. I'm broke. How do I make money? I need to go out and find some adventure. Oh, hell yeah. You might need to uh, work as an interpreter. Uh, I don't. I, you right, can, I'll take anything right For now. an adventure, you could. Yeah, you I don't want to sell my crap. Look for a discovery, which is a D20, or. Yeah, a D20 roll to ask around about where a good adventure can be had. Okay. All right, wait, can I uh, do, you can do the same roll then to find some sort of business opportunity? Yeah. Yep. All right. Twenty. Yep. Oh, two. I have nothing to re-roll. Excellent. So. Oh, this reminds me. I actually I forgot the whole thing we do at the beginning of the week. So too bad. But lucky you. In addition to the weekly misfortune roll that applies to the whole caravan, yeah. you get your own personal misfortune roll. I already wound up naked in a <laughs> What more do you want? <laughs> broke, by the way. So you were broke. He went into debt. <laughs> I'm only slightly better off than this guy. <laughs> Another D20 roll. You're both are the highest level characters in this Big one. number! 17. Very nice. How time. <laughs> As you're uh, looking for a job opportunity, uh, one of the polybody princes sends out uh, one of their bodies with you. They're hanging out kind of near where grandma was plugged into that mech thing, and they sort of see you asking around for, well, I have a lot of skills. They come from the Red Lines. These are the princes, right, who didn't care for the fact that you were glazed. Uh, but they say, well, there is need for a translator just beyond the uh, the columnar defense columns to the south. And they send one of their bodies uh, out with you, and the winds are blowing, and the kind of cinder dust is there. And just as soon as you get past, one of the giant heads that rises from the ground there, one of these, one that, uh, Oh, the ones to the left have been developed into amusement parks that were abandoned shortly after they developed them, so you can see old broken roller coasters on the other one. But apparently this one's still going because it beams up and shoots you with a giant cannon blast, uh, which oh. which destroys the poly body next to you uh, and then reflects off of you. Uh, you you're totally fine because of the glazed brick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you come back, you see the same princes who send you out sort of laughing at you and, and like it was a good prank. And you see that they had 10 bodies before and a 10th body comes out of the body lamps. So they were replacing that one anyway. Ah. <laughs> and they were sending me out just as a joke. Mm -hmm. And now I come back. They wasted I'm, your time. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still broke. <laughs> I still got... Oh my gosh. I've got, is there a pawn shop around? Oh yeah. What do you want to find? There's a little street market, right? Yep. Well, I've got this. I've got uh, the ball from the crystal clock. The ball from the crystal clock. Yeah. Right. Nice. Can I get any point for that? Yep. Let's do a haggling. All right. Let's go haggling. So I'd say it's, you know, worth. 3d6 gold. So, oh. six, seven, eight gold. Eight gold? Eight credits. It's hey, just a ball from a ball pit. <laughs> it's, from a, it's from the it's crystal clock. 
You can so he can upsell it by saying it's it's from the crystal clock. I'll give you a uh, it's good provenance. I'll give you a uh, plus two to your roll. You for ten? Does though? Yeah, for ten, but you can haggle. Do you know how hard <laughs> it is to make these crystal balls? <laughs> you think I just jumped into some kids like ball pit? Those things have been stumbling around these lands for centuries. <laughs> they all start as squares. And, they just sit in your <laughs> and just like from the gentle rocking of the crystal clock as it's stumbling around these ultraviolet grass lands, they eventually become spheres. Haven't you ever seen ice in a river when it turns into a spinning circle? It's amazing. And this takes way longer. These are some of the most perfect crystal spheres that have ever existed. You can use them for science. You can use them for fortune telling. 500 years ago, it was customary to give one for a wedding gift. Right, very few people got married. That's what caused that great population die off. Back in the roll a d20. Back in the roll a d20 days? Yeah, back in the roll a d20. Five. Back, that's okay, this is just for flavor. Back in the, uh, one more. 17. The, back in the machine human days of the second expansion. Exactly. I'm a historian, you see. <laughs> I know this stuff. They'll give you $25. What I can tell you is that, that if you tell me 10 gold for this crystal ball one more time, I'm going to burn your shop. <laughs> I'm going to burn you. You have, clearly have no appreciation for the finer things in the world. You're an uneducated sod, and you should not be in business, period. <laughs> so the sad old, <laughs> sad old curio shop owner. Oh, He's got some, old, bro. his other, you know. A uh, naked rock man <laughs> threatening him. Just... He's got other bits and pieces Look that he's bought monocle. from the Say Trap Traders over the years. Not yet. Or did I get my monocle? I'll just stand out in the sunlight to slowly like get that I'll give like you 25 as a base for, for that harangue. Plus, if you roll a d20, it could be better or worse. Or, You're still 20? For what? 20. Holy crap. Whoa. So, 25 uh, was the kind of the base price after that. And then after you threatened to burn down his hut, uh, he says he'll give you 75, 75 credits. 75. Just, you feel like it's the most you're going to get. You see he's already got some balls from the crystal clock on his shelf. <laughs> it's, it's not as big a deal as you were thinking, but... Oh, man. I can't do this. I can't do it. You won't sell it for 75. I am broke, but... Oh, my gosh. I don't even remember how much stuff costs, by the way. What's the... Uh... All right, fine, 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 fine. Take the ball. Take it. It's going to make a spell just like five again. Oh, I'll take it. So I, I'll keep it. No, no, I'll sell it. <laughs> this is really important. Is I can't. I, man. Here's, here's uh, how much a lot of things cost for your reference. Right. We could make money later. This is only. Yeah, we're going to. We still have a close to two grand in the money. Card. I'm not selling this book. No, we're out of here. Awesome. <laughs> However, <laughs> Caster. Pinch him. <laughs> <laughs> runs. Roll a uh, roll a d6. Success and he, he cast him. Pinches him. Uh, failure. He gets to. away. It's his, uh, it's his special trait. <laughs> nice. So he definitely pinches him. The only question yeah, is. Has a painful pinch. Likes to deliver it to painful location. <laughs> Four, five, six. He gets the location he's aiming for. You know he does. <laughs> <laughs> the the merchants uh, in this region fear you from from now on you can make a note that the uh My mer the merchants fear me yes the merch the what should it, you know the poor merchants so not the princes but the uh lay merchants of the porcelain what? citadel like fear a, you. the porcelain mom. My pet crab. Crab. yes oh your crab okay. yeah. who loves to pinch people in tender areas yeah <laughs> they fear. don't mess with them i gave them three times what it was worth I still <laughs> wasn't enough. I'm cheap. Very stingy. What did he do? It's crap. Pinch me. <laughs> Large rock man and <laughs> the intimidation that shook the merchants of this area was your tiny crab pinching around. <laughs> yes. 
just and the threat to burn down his shop. Yeah, just that added to it. I love it. Welcome back, Caspian. Thank you. I thought I didn't need to be at that board meeting, but I guess we were voting on some stuff. So oh, thankfully, oh, it was Marshall, so it was easy. Okay. And also, thankfully, my character chose to sleep. So there you go. Go. <laughs> Wind's all around. It's like yeah. Are we still at the porcelain? Still at the porcelain, we just, so we've all done the first week of Sleeping What You've Concluded, and everyone, except now it's your turn, has done a second week of kind of well, my chosen second week is broke. My second week is it takes a week to make anything out of the black gold, so I'm making the monocle the whole time. So I'm just awesome. kind of hanging out with my You know what? Room. I needed this. Yeah. It is not better. Do you have clothes? No. <laughs> Like a nice tail. Only enemies. <laughs> 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 they have to be sell like clothes, that, you know? What do you mean? <laughs> I need it. So, yeah, I guess that's just all I'm doing. As you said, it takes a week, so. Only seven. And more. then spend three credits for each week for staying somewhere, or a hundred credits for each week if you want to be real impressive to the, like, the upper yeah, class. Yeah, I was thinking it might be more interesting to be in the three credit, but then I thought. With black gold being so expensive, I kind of want the extra like protection or like yeah. So I spent the one hundred, but I guess now I spent another one hundred. For week two, yeah. Week two, so yeah. So that's all I did. I'm just spending my room money and making monocles. Gonna say I. I, I can't imagine that Hapak would even think that anyone is having trouble living here because he's having just a blast. <laughs> but if there's a chance that he could run into you offhandedly while he's doing the other thing, he'd be more than welcome to stay in his room. <laughs> but it's just one of those things I can't imagine a reason for him to think that, oh yeah, <laughs> their lives are falling apart. There's no way, this is the best. I haven't seen them. They're obviously busy. Last I saw, one of them went out to party. <laughs> That's a good sign. You know? We should roll the weekly uh, fortunes and counters for folks. Who wants to roll? Everyone? Just one person should do the, the D20. Oh, nice. Yeah. Advantage? Anything over 10? Yeah. Anything over 10 is nice. Or not, or it's not nice. Fine. <laughs> One person. One, two, three, four, five. Sat in an ant fire nest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have uh, blisters. Uh, <laughs> threatened to take up one of your slots. Okay. Uh, ugly, I know. ugly fire ant blisters. Okay. You're so uncomfortable you can't carry the same amount. Car, car. Yeah. Well, I think there's only one way to cure these blisters, and it's to rub glow paint on it. So the glow paint's going, and it's going around. And it's going. Great. Just put glowing blisters in that slot. <laughs> did you choose the party? Emma? I did not. No. I, I How did you get blisters? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the one suffering the misfortune. I just... <laughs> yep. Did you get any experience points for this suffering? <laughs> I don't know. Because the side is kind of suffering. <laughs> I thought if I sat there, maybe the trees would come to me. Yes. So you are starting to see grasses tumbling towards you, but... Uh... Well, they just got bit in the ass right here. <laughs> uh, all good things come to those who wait. <laughs> Not necessarily. Roll up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Speaking of like, like the concept of like a frog in a swamp, where like half the things I want to eat, you love that you sit there and don't move. <laughs> yeah. Caspian, would you roll a d8? The two pyramids back to back. Eight. Nice. I forgot to ask, how, how, uh, of the one of four, is it just one of four Prince skill points I got covered there? Yep. Okay. Yep. You run. So this week, 
uh, something special happens when porcelain walkers, big, impressive, towering 40, 50 feet off the ground, unspindly porcelain legs, and laden with trade goods, come in from the west. There are a lot of them. Five in this big porcelain caravan. Um, and as they approach, uh, they're firing weaponry. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Wildly. Uh, they get close. They fire at some uh, trade guards who approach them, and they are presenting their, uh, you know, big ceramic tablets. They're opening these chests that they have that have ceramic tablets that have, you know, ancient biblical-looking runes on them, which are just like the codes to get past the uh, laser walkers, the codes of entry. So the heads shut down, and they're able to get in. Uh, but they start firing down indiscriminately at uh, folks there, and a porcelain prince sort of strides out. Uh, and there is a prince, there's a pair of princes on each of these. They're, they all have the same mask, so they're one polybody. Uh, but when this other prince comes out to address them, he too is shot down. Not uh, a very unusual happening. And y'all are kind of out uh, walking along the water, trading information when this happens uh, around here. But That's our cue to get out of town. Did you say this is not an unusual? This is unusual. This is unusual. Yeah. Okay, princes are shooting at other princes. Yep, and one uh, one of the porters that is on this uh, thing like grabs onto the side of one of the legs and crawls down all creepy, like zombie-like, and somebody shouts out, It's Vones! They've been infected by Vones! What do you do, Alroy? Vones? Yeah. Violent machines. Yelga the battle camel got yes. infected by one. Ah, uh, well, I suggest to everybody that we need to scoot. Hmm. I'm like not here, right? I'm in my hotel room. Making a mama. This is at the end of the Is this the end of the week? End of week? We're all back end together. End of week two. End of week two. Oh, so we're all back together? Well, I didn't get the feeling that we're week two. Oh! We'll say it's, uh, you know, on. early week two before you do your thing. So this is just before you get to do. You're with us? Yeah. No, we okay, can sort so of retcon we... and play with time. But this is the scene we'll do now, and then yours is the scene. What if, as soon as we escape this scene, you tell us the epic story of what you were doing? Yeah. I was, yeah. I was yeah. playing the party for experience. That's all I was doing. Good. Oh. That could help us in this moment. <laughs> Actually. Maybe we should pause and. I think, uh. We need to know could what hurt he's you. Got. We need to know what he's got. Well, I mean, yep. he's entitled to party. I saw him. So everybody, uh, all Don't of worry, my crab is a cod piece. He's <laughs> 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 pinched on to like the oh, tables. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Under your brick club hand. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't bother me. Nice. Yeah. All right, so y'all y'all look at each other when these freaky, like, you know, people who have been turned into robo-zombies are coming in on these, like, they're just throwing down, like, they've got a crate full of trade goods that they slide off to try and hit somebody with, but they nearly find it lands on the ground, stuff comes out of you, all look amongst yourselves, and you say, where's Peptid? And then we go to uh, roll a d6 for the how much it costs. What does Bones stand for again? Sorry. Violent Machines. Wow, we are one really only costs 200 and you only get 200 experience points from it oh, yeah roll a d what or a d20 i mean what are you do higher is better nine you're gonna make an exercise for a robot too right you get 200 experience then. all right you uh accidentally did join a revolutionary movement <laughs> Which sounds like uh, just kicked is. off. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. Right. Because you got in with a bunch of revolutionaries, so this is the revolution now. On this porcelain, on these porcelain things? Yeah. Could be. Okay. Could be. Anyway, sorry. Good. You now have a, a humorous code name. 
So, uh, <laughs> Caspian, can you think of a good uh, <laughs> code name for a, a revolution? Um, Underground revolutionary movement. Gelato <laughs> guys. <laughs> gelato guys. Gelato G U I S E, like guys, like a disguise. Gelato guys. Nice. So note that with the porcelain revolutionaries, you're known as gelato guys. Oh, that's my name. Yes. Yep. Uh, you have a secret package marked to delivery in. Could you roll the big green die? Holy moly. Oh, we're at a black city. The endless houses, almost, where gold and silver can maybe be bought. You have a package marked for delivery from the Porcelain Revolutionaries to the Endless Houses. Uh, a note, if you would, paid P to, page 29 by that. So I can refer back to it. Okay. What was the name again? Sherbert? No. <laughs> Gelato <laughs> guys, but guys <laughs> like the guys. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We will yet crack this porcelain. We will yet crack this porcelain visage. Gelato guys, bring this to the endless houses. What's he giving me? A note? Package. Package. So it's going to take up a, a inventory slot. Okay, deliver package. Um, Who's got what to do again? We all sort of have to go do something for... I don't. The one thing that I had to do... I got Where was I bringing Where, to you? What do we have to do? The Endless Houses. Where the hell down there? Go here to the, what the guy It is far. Did. We've been waiting right. for a member who has a caravan. Soon as you bring this package, and then come back to us with news, the revolution can finally begin. Well, I'm going to need some... Money. What is that? Vomes! We must we must depart. <laughs> 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 That's how I handle my bills. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Uh, I got a uh, revolution no, brother. Well, <laughs> Don't forget the secret handshake. <laughs> well, they never showed it to me. So. Oh, damn, he runs back and quickly shows you. <laughs> You do like the live long and prosper hand, and then you go to, you know, shake hands like this. <laughs> yes. Looks to be like a very successful revolution. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going places. <laughs> <laughs> just, just in the few months it takes you to get there and back, then we'll finally revolve. Exactly. <laughs> so you get this sense that yeah, there. Change takes time, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Well, it's being... like turning a ship, you know, a little bit here, and in a few years, we'll be in a completely different course. They're being ruled over by, I found out in my research of the Porcel Princes, that any level, like, like steps, are considered points of status, so they literally violently will shove people down steps if they no. cross over, like, the three m- inches yeah. or whatever. The murmur of a revolution is enough for instant death, yeah. Yeah. instant execution. So all the shooting? They're Not fighting. The just revolutionaries are fighting no. for one step. Just crazy robots. Literally. Or people who've been Ouch. infected by crazy robots. I understand, yep. These are nanobots? And this city has no defense against them? Bones. They what they do is, like with Yelga the Battle Camel, they corrupt your source code and yes, may given time install uh battle into you. Hmm. Wait, we all have source code? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all like when oh, like when Neo code. sees the code or oh. Okay, one. That's what Ka is. Because I am a biomechanic. My question here is, do the bones... Yep. I mean, in-game, we've only seen bones. Y'all got the battle camel. Kind of stare off in the middle distance and be cool as hell. And then we've got these guys who are obviously violent. My question is, because I wrote it down already, and it seems like like the infection incites a violent response to the points of the princess. Have we interacted with enough bombs to or any sort of concept? You know, I didn't ask. Before, I mean, <laughs> yeah, people are shooting 
like indiscriminately in the air, we should probably leave. But on the same hand, are they shooting at us? Or are they just <laughs> shooting at the princes? They're shooting at anybody who gets close to their walkers. We're in a and you are far enough away that you could just dip no problem. Roll a d10 for me, and you also roll a d10. Is there a back door to the city? What, we need to go... And the city's like a big... Did I steal the map? It's open place. You're at like the southerly water. Yeah. It's just surrounded by laser drones, but they've found a way past the laser drones. You got nine? Me too! Whoa. Pair nines. Uh, We'd like to split and then roll again, please. So, you know that Loam's, uh, you know, they, they vary in how they behave. It can be very erratic and buggy and glitchy. Yeah. It's were... kind of like you can have a cold or you can have pneumonia. <laughs> exactly. These, are, these ones are pneumonia. Salt, come again. Uh, they, the, you know that they are attached to Loam nest mothers, and if they become severed from those nest mothers, it can be bad news, they can go totally erratic. Um, one of them, the one who's running down, so there's just two that have guns that are firing. There's one that's like walking into a wall, like someone glitched in a video game, and some of the others are just standing around. Uh, but the one who's creepily walking down the lake is has like a siren for a head that's going around, and it's calling out, digital perfection, for sale now, simulated rapture, error. <laughs> Simulated rapture. Mm. Sorry, what happens if they get disconnected? Smothers, they can become erratic? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. They go, there are theories. Uh, people who experiment with phones usually don't last long enough to write down their results, but they either uh, go crazy and violent or they shut off. Okay. 50-50. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> so I hear one for running away. Niela. Uh, so now that you've partied, this is like the end of two weeks. Yeah. So all together now. Yep. And you have the monocle finished. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. Really nice. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to try and find these guys. Yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, with everyone. We think we should run away. I'm like, yes. That's my heart. Wait, do we have our stuff to caravan? Yeah. The Rouge and his cadre, Rebitan, Corny, Horny. We're all together. Y'all yeah, we'll are together. They've we'll got. Mm-hmm. And I've got an appointment with Blaze in your 12 body that I'd rather not make. <laughs> <laughs> How big is my package? <laughs> How big is my package? Let's roll a d20. No. It's your world, man. How big is it? <laughs> <laughs> The secret <laughs> <laughs> the delivery. Of course, of course. Uh, it takes up one stone, so uh, one so, slot. <coughs> yeah, I was thinking like a double shoe box. A double shoe box. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I do inventory my monocle, obviously, right? Yep. Yeah, although you could fit three, like two other small things in there. I'm trying to run in this whole cantankerous thing. Well, we have to do. <laughs> was there? Was there <laughs> that, go try to sell that. <laughs> How much would you pay me for this? <laughs> <laughs> there he is, everyone stutters their like, jobs. wandered off. Yeah, and then we like tracked her for two days across the dunes and found her staring into the middle distance on the dunes. No yeah. sign of other homes. I'm just trying to remember like where on the map that would have been like ish yeah. because Between Violet City and Road. Yep. Because if there's nest mothers, she didn't ever act erratically. She might return back that way. <laughs> Yes. I am very invested in finding Yelga at some point in time. If, oh. Even if she's just badass off, like leading a party of her own. <laughs> like, I don't even know what's happening. Anymore. Camel party. Yeah, absolutely. She's a thousand camels. <laughs> okay. She got sold. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Alright, alright. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> I went for a brick. Yeah. He turned into a monocle. So you know where she is, though. With at least you know the people that she's with. Yeah. I mean, we don't know about them. Yeah. <laughs> we know met. of them. <laughs> we did make it back early. Really I mean, well. we're not like close or anything. <laughs> I'm not like mom, giving them a wedding invite, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I follow them on the ground. <laughs> Anybody but, for not running away? Sounds like that's the party's idea. You can cho- totally get to your caravan. You can go soak up some bullets. I got a question. Too, but I think you quick. Was no. there a li- Do we automatically get these? or a Those are locked unless you have 
ha equal to the number to the left. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got the first two available. Uh, so I got the first two available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, cool. So. Y'all get into your caravan as this, uh, you know, the crossbow, violence is breaking cool. out. The princes are some, a walker, another walker is coming out from the trading platform to fight with this one. And it's got a big porcelain cannon. That's all in the background as you begin to take your caravan over the ridge and away from this, uh, terrible place. 